and welcome to Space Week Live for Sunday, September 26th, 2021. Uh, so, as always, uh, welcome, and if you have any questions, please go ahead and type them in the chat. Just make sure to tag my name, Ross Space, so that we're sure to see the questions, which will be compiled and answered at the end of the show. Um, hmm. Okay, not sure if Nightbot is uh, responding, but... Uh, all right, so let's get into it. Uh, last week was pretty quiet. There was just one launch, which I didn't end up streaming because it was at 3 a.m. on a Monday. Um, but it was a Long March 7Y4 launching the Tianzhou 3 cargo craft to the Chinese space station. Uh, this was the second cargo delivery to the CSS. Let's check out the launch. And the, uh, the cargo craft autonomously docked about seven hours later. A nice uh, uh, quick ascent to the Chinese space station, which we see here. Uh, you may recall that the crew of the CSS returned home last week, so the Chinese space station is currently unoccupied. Uh, and again, this is an autonomous docking, so that no, no crew, crew are needed. Uh, the next crew is expected to launch on October 3rd, uh, and word on the street is that one of the crew will be a woman. She'll be the first female taikonaut, or Chinese astronaut, to visit the Chinese orbital station, or to visit a Chinese orbital station. Uh, remember, this is actually their third station, although this will be the biggest. 
In other news, it's been reported that William Shatner will be going to space. Shatner is, of course, best known for his portrayal of Captain James Tiberius Kirk in the Gene Roddenberry-created Star Trek franchise. The original TV seri series aired from 1966 to 1969, and Shatner's Kirk also graced seven Star Trek movies from 1979 through 1994. He'll be riding on Blue, Blue Origin's New Shepard suborbital rocket up past the Kármán line to about 105 kilometers in altitude. This will be the second crewed New Shepard launch. The first crewed launch a couple of months ago set multiple records, including the oldest person to have flown in space, 82-year-old Wally Funk. She bumped John Glenn, who had flown on a space shuttle mission in 1998 at the age of 77. Born on March 22, 1931, however, William Shatner is 90 years old. He will displace Wally Funk as the oldest person to have ever been in space, though neither he nor Wally Funk will have reached orbital velocity like John Glenn did. They will fly straight up and fall straight back down on a 15-minute vertical, vertical flight. Uh, quite a... quite a... a uh, cap-off to a uh, <laughs> storied career. Uh, looking ahead to this week, so that's that's actually it for last week. It was a very quiet week. Looking ahead to this week, uh, on Monday, September 27th at 4 a.m. Eastern, 0800 GMT, a Chinese Long March 3 may be launching with an unspecified payload. Uh, there's not much information available about this launch, so it's probably military in nature. Uh, also on Monday at 2.11 p.m. Eastern, 1811 GMT, a ULA Atlas V will launch Landsat 9, the latest in the Landsat series of Earth observation satellites, the first of which was launched in 1972, 49 years ago. Uh, Landsat 9 will have two main instruments, the Operational Land Imager 2, or OLI-2, which will capture images in visible, near-infrared, and shortwave infrared light, the Thermal Infrared Sensor 2, or, well, and the Thermal Infrared Sensor 2, or TIRS 2, which will measure thermal infrared radiation or heat. Uh, by using different combinations of light wavelengths, we can gain all sorts of insight into soil viability, flooding, erosion, absorption of solar radiation, landform changes, etc. And here's just a selection of, of images from Landsat 8, which <clears throat> has been uh, orbiting for, I think, five years or so. And, of course, the launch will be live-streamed here on Raw Space. Coverage begins at about T minus 41 minutes. Then on Tuesday, September 28th, starting at 8 a.m. Eastern, 12 GMT, the Soyuz MS-18 spacecraft will be relocated from the Rasvet module to the new Nauka module. Uh, on board will be MS-18 crew members Oleg Novitsky, Pyotr Dubrov, and Mark Vandehei. This will clear the way for the upcoming MS-19 crew to dock to the Rasviet Nader or Earth-facing port on October 5th. On Wednesday, September 29th, at 8 p.m. Eastern, midnight GMT, a Chinese Long March 2C will launch the Yaogan 3202 military satellite, presumed to be for signals intelligence. Uh, no live stream, of course, for that one. Then on Thursday, September 30th, with coverage starting at 8.45 a.m. Eastern, 12.45 GMT, the SpaceX-23 Cargo Dragon, also known as CRS-23, will undock from the International Space Station bound for a splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean. As always, with Cargo Dragon missions, there will be live coverage of the undocking, but not a splashdown. Twelve hours later, at 8.48 p.m. Eastern, 048 GMT, a Japanese Epsilon rocket will launch the Rapid Innovative Payload Demonstration Satellite 2, or RAISE-2, technology demonstration into low Earth orbit, 
along with eight SmallSat rideshares. There will probably be live coverage, but it's not certain yet, so stay tuned for that. Now, let me get to your questions. Uh, if I can find what I'm doing here. Okay. <laughs> Rockin' Robins 13 asks, is there a great possibility of Captain Kirk going to space? I would say it's a pretty good possibility. Uh, it's been widely reported, although I didn't specifically see anything official from um, any uh, anything official coming from Blue Origin about it. But um, yeah, it seems to be it seems to be happening. And uh, I, hey, I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, there has been some discussion of. Um, whether he paid for his trip, uh, but the the general consensus or the general feeling seems to be that his ride was comped, was provided uh, uh, gratis by Blue Origin. Not that it really matters; he's rich, so he can afford whatever. But uh, but uh, FYI, MVM Motovlog Music asks Raw Space, "How is your Starlink working out? Uh, pretty well. I mean, I I still have occasional." Uh, I mean, as, as you may be aware, if you pay much attention to the launches on this channel, uh, that there was a, a fairly lengthy um, uh, pause in Starlink launches while they were, I guess, fi finishing preparations for their, their uh, new generation of their latest version of laser interlinked satellites. Um, but uh, so we haven't had many new Starlinks uh, launched in the last couple of months. But uh, yeah, my Starlink service is working okay. My main concern is actually my lawnmower uh, service because I, I have a guy that mows my lawn. And uh, uh, ever since I got st my Starlink uh, dishy uh, a few months ago, it has been sitting out in my side yard. Uh, on its little tripod. Well, that uh, th there's a cable that's uh, hardwired into the satellite dish, and it's a hundred foot long cable that's strung, you know, to the house and then through the garage to the to the uh, uh, to the power supply and, or to the power distribution unit slash modem. And um, uh, actually, just the power dist. Anyway, the uh, uh, that cable, if it gets run over, that's uh, boom. I mean, that's it. I, I have no more Starlink because it's hardwired into the satellite. So uh, that's a $500 loss right there. So I've been totally paranoid about the lawnmower destroying my Starlink cable. I really need to get myself in gear and uh, mount the Starlink dish up on my wall near the roof line. I have the equipment for it, but I just haven't got around to it. Uh, I was, I, I kept wanting to put together a video about the process, but I'm not, I'm not Bob Vila and I'm not a home improvement channel. So this isn't a home improvement channel. So, uh, I just need to get it up there. And if I want to, you know, make a video mentioning what I did, uh, retroactively or after the fact, then, then so be it. But I need to get it off my lawn because at some point a mistake will be made and that cable's going to get shredded, and I'm going to be a very unhappy camper. Um, but the surface itself is great. I haven't done any speed tests lately, but typically I only use Starlink for my my cell phone. I have because I have regular Google Fiber internet, which I'm very fortunate to be in a in the Google Fiber footprint uh, here in Charlotte. Because the uh, the uh, available service areas for that are quite limited, but I'm, I happen to be in one of them, so. Um, and so I use that for my main service, but, um, on my cell phone, I primarily use the, uh, uh, the Starlink and I don't, I don't typically have, you know, there may be sort of ratty, ratty reception, um, uh, occasionally, but it's not a big deal. Uh, if there is, then I just switch to my Google provided service and, and I have, uh, and then I'm fine. Uh, Rockin Robbins 13 says, did you hear about the important malfunction during Inspiration 4? Uh, I have not really read anything about Inspiration 4 since the, since they returned. Um, so no, I had not heard about a malfunction. 
uh, I'd be interested to learn more about that. Thanks for bringing it to my attention. Um, Mark Desaire says there's lots of launches in the coming week. Yeah, I guess when it rains, it pours, as the saying goes. Um, so after a very quiet uh, week, we're looking at a, a whole slew of uh, launches and events coming up. Um, also, Mark Desaire, uh, mixed opportunities to see any of those launches live. Uh, yeah, depending on the timing. I mean, we've got, what do we, what do we have for live streams? We have uh, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Eastern, uh, 8.45 a.m. Eastern, and then possibly 8.48 p.m. Eastern. So the morning ones are probably ideal for you unless you're at work, but because uh, uh, Mark is in the Netherlands. Let's see. Any questions that haven't made it to... Um, Who's in the what's it? Oh, Rockin' Robbins. Somebody tell Shatner to, not to wear a red shirt. That would be funny. There has been talk of, of whether he'll wear his um, his uh, Starfleet uniform. Um, let's see. Inspiration for malfunction. Okay, so let's see here. Oh, also, it was just brought to my attention. Um, actually, like two minutes before the broadcast started, that uh, before this live stream started, that um, it has been revealed that the ashes of James Doohan, uh, the original actor of Star Trek's uh, Montgomery Scott, or Scotty, um, were smuggled aboard the International Space Station 12 years ago, and they've been flying aboard the ISS ever since. Uh, that's cool. Um, okay, smuggled aboard the ISS by video game entrepreneur Richard Garriott in 2008 during a 12-day mission as a private astronaut. He had, he had ridden up to the ISS on a Russian Soyuz uh, flight, and uh, there were a few of those, uh, you know, rich, uh, rich folks riding the, the Soyuz. Um, uh, but yeah, there haven't been any of those in a while, but interesting. So not too much gets smuggled by the, uh, by the astronauts themselves. But whenever you throw private citizens or private, uh, yeah, citizens into the mix, uh, you never know what's going to happen. So, oh, the toilet. Um, okay, yeah. So regarding Inspiration4, <clears throat> article here from CNET says, uh, the Inspiration4 crew had challenges with the toilet. The Crew Dragon Lou, with a view, needs some upgrades. Um, triumph. Duh, 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 duh. Challenges with the Lou. Did not elaborate on exactly what the problem was. Facility, the uh, toilet was located near the cupola, allowing for a wee bit of privacy. And apparently, um, Thomas Pesquet took a picture, or tweeted a photo of the toilet when he. Uh, ascended on Crew Dragon uh, earlier this year. One of the most secret yet useful systems on the spacecraft. So, <laughs> upon hearing of the mission's potty problems, Bidet Company Tushy, nice, said its product engineers were standing at the ready to develop the first ever space bidet and I will not repeat the name of it because it, it, it's a little bit edgy for this channel. <laughs> wow. Okay, so we actually don't know what the problems were, but there was an issue with the uh, the, com the commode on Crew Dragon during the Inspiration4 mission. Um, yes, uh, lots of captain's log jokes, etc. Uh, Gaming Nerd Thirty Three. Oh, Rock and Robin's 13. Everybody is very quiet about the details. There is a lot of secrecy uh, surrounding the more private matters 
that that may happen in space you know, everything from the although i mean the, the the technology of the toilets is is pretty openly discussed but uh you know but things like ha, you know have has anyone ever had carnal relations in space etc cetera, etc cetera. um who knows i mean somebody knows but uh nobody's telling <laughs> so yeah there, there are aspects of space which are still quite secretive but um the more civilians we get up there the more open it will become and um some of these questions will get answered um because they're not bound by you know vows of secrecy and non-disclosure agreements and uh, and fears of you know losing their job if they talk about it uh gaming nerd 5 gaming nerd 353 asks who would you want to fly with virgin galactic or blue origin or go up on a soyuz to the iss as a space tourist well um i don't like those choices um first of all if i had the option of flying to space i would be glad to accept anything that was offered i don't have millions millions of dollars uh, you know, so I can't buy my way there. But if a flight was offered on any of these craft, I would gladly accept it. And I would be a very happy customer. I mean, not even customer. I would be a very happy uh, participant. However, um, if I'm going to go to space and I only have one chance to do it and I have my choice of vehicles, it would definitely be Crew Dragon. Uh, because it is much roomier than Soyuz and with a much better view and um, uh, I would be launching from here in the States, which is my preference. I don't really want to go to Kazakhstan. Um, it's also a, a smoother ride. You know, the Soyuz is pretty rough on its, on its occupants. Uh, and it, it attains orbit, whether you're flying on a, a, uh, a purely commercial mission like, or a purely civilian mission like the Inspiration4, uh, or an ISS uh, you know, or a trip to the ISS, either way, uh, you're still achieving orbit. Whereas with, and you'll be in the space, you'll be in space for multiple days. Whereas if you fly on Virgin Galactic, you're only going to ascend to, you know, 55 or 60 miles. If you ascend, if you fly on, uh, Blue Origin, you're only going to reach a hundred kilometers, 105 kilometers. Um, uh, and it's only going to be a few minutes, you know, and you're only going to get, uh, you know, between three and six minutes of weightlessness, if that. Um, so absolutely SpaceX over any of those other options. But if I had the choice between Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin or Soyuz, then I would probably pick Soyuz because, again, I would be attaining orbit and I would have much more time in space to uh, enjoy it and take in the views. Um Let's see. Mark Desaire says private things should be kept private. Uh, yeah, I mean, certainly things that that uh, should remain private should remain private. But uh, um, yeah, <laughs> people invest uh, a lot in in the endeavor of of uh, uh, space, and so they, they they're very curious about what goes on up there. Uh, ah, yes, Snow Kitten says some ESA astronauts are a little more open uh, about um, space, the space privy, um, for primarily cultural reasons, uh, and I, I, I totally agree with that. Uh, the U.S. can be pretty prudish about things, um, but... Let's see. Uh, yes, a good quote by Kenneth is a good way to end out the show. The sky calls to us. If we do not destroy ourselves, we will one day venture to the stars. Um, oh, and we have another question, so that's not closing out the show. Uh, Iwo Wazanuski asks, what capsule will Crew 3 fly? That's the uh, Crew Dragon Crew 3 crew. <laughs> um I am not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll be a new capsule or, uh, or Endeavor or which, which it will be resilience. <clears throat> of course it was resilience that, 
uh, was the Crew-1 capsule and was also used for Inspiration-4. Endeavor was the Demo-2 capsule and was also used for Crew-2. So, uh, but I'm not sure uh, what Crew-3 will be flying. All right. Okay, so that'll wrap it up for this week. Thank you all for joining me. And uh, until the next stream, which would be uh, Landsat 9 tomorrow afternoon, I bid you adieu, keep it raw, and I will see you later.